p.m. Welcome to a long play video um, and as always I'm going to tell you my thoughts during the process of this game so you can dive into the mind of a grandmaster. Grand grandmaster. Okay so I'm playing a, a 1900 play from India and he has started with knight to f6. Now the moves I normally play are c4 here or the London but just for a change I'm going to play bishop g5 the, the so-called Trompovsky attack made popular by a number of English players um, in well I'd say probably in in you know the 1990s probably d5 is one of the most solid responses Ooh, I wanted a bit of action knight e4 is the other main line when we can play the raptor defense with h4 but this is a good move d5 and I can now double the pawns on f6 but I've tried this before in some games and I'm not so keen on it. I I prefer the move here, knight d2, which may look a little bit peculiar, but the idea behind this move is to stop my opponent going knight e4. And I want to get a sort of London system set up. So if you know what I mean by a London system, I hope you do. I mean, I talk about it all the blooming time. It's where I go c3 and e3 and create this pyramid like this. The only difference with this position is, of course, that my bishop's not on f4, which it normally is in the London system, but it's on g5. Pros and cons of that is I'm pinning the knight on, on, on f6. It's a bit more active. But after bishop e7, my opponent will be able to move the knight and swap off bishops, simplifying his position, making it possibly easier for him to get equality. I'm going to continue with the London system set up, e3, so I can get my bishop out. We need to get our pieces out at the start of the game. And the main advantage I'm trying to claim here is that my opponent's bishop on c8 is trapped behind these pawns, making it a bad piece. On the other hand, well, let's move my bishop out. My bishop here is a very good piece, maybe trying to attack h7 later on. And my bishop is outside my pawn structure here. Okay, so I have an interesting decision to make here. Do I play bishop to one of these two squares, retreating? Or do I take on f6 and maybe even follow up with something like f4? Trying to get stonewall position, but I've got rid of my bad bishop. I think they're all uh, uh, equally okay. Generally, I want to keep the tension by keeping my bishop on the board, but that might not keep the tension for long because it would just move his knight and I have to swap anyway. So taking is a very simple way to play. And then I go f4, stop him breaking with e5, and just go knight to f3. So I don't know what's best, but okay, I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to play, I'm going to keep the tension, bishop h4. Even bishop f4 there is not so silly because then... You know, with a bishop on this square, he, later on he can't move his knight and swap bishops. A6. Now that to me looks like a very peculiar move. Every move you play should have a reason. What is the reason behind this move? Does he really want to go B5? Well, maybe he does, but um, that doesn't seem like even a great idea for my opponent, B5. Because what's he doing with a pawn on B5? He's not really attacking anything on that side yes he's gaining space but i don't i think this is a waste of time so i'm just going to simply develop um knight to f3 i could have gone f4 as well but i want to get castled as soon as i've developed my knights and my bishops got my king safe i can then think of a middle game strategy so my opponent's now developed i'm going to castle why not and you can see that i've left my pawn on c2 so i haven't gone c3 creating this pyramid pawn structure yet because I wanted to leave the possibility of going c4. So my opponent's gone b5. I mean, this is the only thing to make, make his plan look reasonably logical. And now there are a couple of plans. I could keep the tension for one more move with something like queen e2, connecting the rooks is always a good plan. I could try to go for e4, either with queen e2 or not. I could try going for a4, trying to sort of say, well, your pawn's actually misplaced there quite like a4 actually the more I'm thinking about that um, I could even think about knight e5 which is a main main move in the London system there's lots of possibilities lots of attractive possibilities knight e5 followed by f4 is certainly something I'm liking the looks of more and more 
knight e5, knight takes, pawn takes, knight d7. Well, maybe I let him simplify a bit too much. a4 is a very logical way to meet this b5 move, and I don't think that does me any damage, that move. Pawn b4 would be his best reply. Pushing on. Has that really helped me? Because he wants to go c5 and c4 next and get some activity over there. I mean, as he's playing a bit slow, it kind of feels natural to play e4, try to open it up, doesn't it? Because he's playing on the queen side, he hasn't castled, so I'm thinking, how can I take advantage of that? Well, maybe a move like e4. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, hitting his rook. e4, trying to open things up and maybe going e5 while his king's in the center. I'm liking e4. Let's go for e4. This to me looks like the most logical move because he, he's played these moves on the side. He hasn't castled. So he's wasting a bit of time by playing these two moves. His king is in the center, so my king is castled. I'm fully developed. Every piece, minor piece of mine, bishops and knights are developed. So I want to open up the position as quickly as I can to try and uh, punish him for, for not castling and playing these slow moves. So e4. And I've got to consider, well, you know, next I might want to play e5. Because having a pawn on e5 is is quite nice in a lot of positions. I mean, it's not as solid as having a pawn on e, on e3, but it, it can it can benefit me well. So he's broken with c5. Now again, I can try to keep my pawns here by going c3, getting a pawn chain. Taking on c5 allows his knight to to get a very active square. Why do I want to activate that knight on d7? I, there's no need to do that. But I also have ideas here of either taking or going e5 so i'm just thinking what should i play well if i take on d5 not a silly move if he takes the pawn i quite like my position because well i just feel like i have the e file i feel like i have good development i think i think after pawn takes the only move i'm worried about is knight takes because then he tries to swap bishops these guys and he tries to get his knight into somewhere like f4. So can I think of a good move after pawn takes, knight takes? What 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 can I play there? I can't think of a good move. I will eliminate it from my thoughts and think about something else. So pawn takes, knight takes. Uh, no, I'm eliminating that one. Okay, so what about e5? e5, he moves his knight. Let's say he moves his knight to this square. You know what? All these moves, I, I don't. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the move c3 because I don't want him kicking my bishop off this diagonal. My bishop here is very good. If he castles, it's very good for starting an attack. I want to keep my pawn on d4. I don't want to take anything with that pawn because it frees his pieces up. Why free your opponent's pieces? And this threat of e5. I don't know if it's a threat, but it's an idea. Why not keep it in the air? Okay, so he's gone bishop e7. Now, if I play e5, he can then move his knight into e4. I can swap bishops and then try something like queen e2 to dislodge his knight on e4. And that, to me, looks like a, a quite pleasant position for me. The other thing I can do now is try to keep my pawn here. But after queen e2, his rook is no longer being attacked after a capture on e4. So queen e2, I'd expect him to take on e4. Knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. And too many pieces again exchanged. I, I don't like it, so I'm going to play e5. I don't. I don't exchange too many pieces easily. You know, I, I want to keep some tension. So you know, if I'd have played queen e2, it allowed him to swap so many pieces on e4. You know, he could have take on e4 with the pawn, with the knight, with the bishop. Everything comes off. And you know, I, I, I higher rated players tend to try to keep the tension in the position so that's what I'm trying to do here and now again I have a possibility I mean do I keep the bishops on or do I sort the bishops off what's the best way to play normally when you have more space and I have more space because of my pawn structure pawn structure dictates the space or not you want to normally keep pieces on the board so bishop g3 would be would be my normal idea and you know what I think just for that reason I'm going to play bishop g3 why He's a bit more cramped. Avoid exchanging pieces 
when your opponent has a bit more cramped position because he has less squares when he's cramped to maneuver uh, those pieces on so we want to avoid that okay now that to me is an extremely committal move it, you know he's giving me this g6 square i can immediately come in with bishop g6 i think this is a horrible move from my opponent you know, when you play a pawn move, every pawn move weakens a square. This pawn move weakens this square and this square. So, um, he should have castled surely before playing that. Now, I have two options. Do I go with a check? Or do I try to get another piece to this weakened square? I'm trying to... He, he's made a pawn move. This square here is the square I'm looking at. So, I can either get my bishop in, or I can try to get my knight in. Knight h4. So, after knight h4, I expect he castles. And then my position is still okay because I have my f pawn coming, and I also have knight g6 because yes, this is a check. This is this is a check, bishop here. But after the king moves, does it achieve a great deal? Not much because I can't open the position up. So I'm going to go for knight h4 because this looks like a very nice square for my knight. And like I said earlier, you know the bishop. You know you understand pawn structures when you learn more, you know, as you improve as a player. And I know this pawn structure, which is very like a French defense pawn structure. This pawn structure here makes this bishop fantastic. Why? Because my pawns are on dark squares. So they kind of block my dark square bishop for now, but my light square bishop can work around my own pawn. So my opponent has come back to try to defend against some of these ideas and this check now looks like the best way to continue. Why Why not? Why not throw a check in? Forces king to come to d7. Let's do this. And then what I've got to consider next is trying to think of a way to open up his king position. Taking here I don't like because it allows his knight in. Something like f4, f5 could be a much more logical way to play. If I go f4, he can go f5 trying to block things, but then surely a peace sacrifice on f5 has got to be very tempting because my two pawns are going to be very good. So I'm going to go f4. And uh, the idea of this move, he's gone here. So now I'm going to, I, I, he wants to block things up because his king is a bit weak. So I, I really now want to sacrifice on f5. Now I'd like to play knight takes f5, but g6 is very annoying because it attacks my queen. So I think I might have to go bishop takes f5 and sacrifice like this. Just double checking because it'll cause sacrifices are always risky affairs. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Do I do that or not? The other thing is, do I wait and do I do I play a move like a4? And because I want to open up the position now because his king is on this stupid square. So I'm just trying to think the best way to open up the position. I think I'm going to try to open it up as much as I can. Then he can go c4 though and he blocks it up. Ah, but then I take here. Okay, let's go for this. So I want to open it up. If he goes c4, then I will sacrifice bishop takes f5 because I maybe open up an a5. Okay, I'm going to play this. I mean, it just feels like the natural natural continuation to me. Um, you know, I don't know if this is even particularly... I, I've played this particularly brilliantly, I have to admit, but it just seems like a natural way to continue. Um, because I open up his king, I want to move my queen out the way and move my f-pawn and e-pawns up the board. So it's certainly one of the most interesting ways to play. So I need to move my queen, or I could come in with some knight move, but my main idea is to move my queen and go f5. So if I do that, can he go f5 himself? Well, then I have knight f5. Let's do this. So where, where do I move my queen? Maybe here's better because I, I, I attack this square. So let's keep it the most active I can. And the idea is to go f5 and to put a little bit of pressure here. I want to go f5 with my bishop here will open up at the moment these two pawns in the way of the bishop. And yes, I, I, I've sacked a piece for two pawns. But the idea is, if I can get these pawns going, I they're going to become extremely strong pawns. And I could have had the same position without a pawn on a4, but I feel like it's good to have a pawn on a4 here because it gives me more options of opening up the queen side. Okay, so my opponent has decided to swap off that knight. 
I don't want to swap queens. Of course I don't want to swap queens. I could have uh, considered that one, but then I think I lose a piece. So I'm just going to go simply taking. And of course, he should now really consider this one. OK, well, this move I'm very happy to see because I'm just going to go F5, which is my plan anyway. And I want to play E6 next. And even though I'm a piece down, the re one of the reasons this is working so well or, or at least decent compensation is that if you look at my opponent's pieces whenever you sacrifice don't just look at your own pieces look at your opponents my opponent's pieces are really constricted they can't move I mean think where my opponent can move his pieces neither his knights can move now he's gone g5 of course I can't take on pass on because I lose my queen but I am going to play bishop here with a big threat as I, as I said before of e6 check winning the queen and also now this move he's played is very risky because he's given me two connected pass pawns so I'm very happy with how this is going at the moment so he's bravely moved his king forwards okay now like I said before pushing pawns is, is always a tempting thing to do but it can be very weakening if I go e6 move I'd like to play what the thing I said earlier, whenever you push a pawn, you weaken squares. And you always have to think about that. What squares does e6 weaken? It weakens f6. And I, I don't want to allow his knights to suddenly move. So I think here, going back to the Nimzovich idea, the threat is stronger than the execution. I want to keep the possibility of e6 in the air. So I'm thinking now, my knight's the only piece not working. Why don't I play knight f3? And then when e6 comes, my knight can come into e5 with backup. But if I go knight to f3, the one move that puts me off at the moment is h5. Because if I go queen takes h5, he goes queen takes f5. And I've got to find some tactical idea there. Otherwise, I'm not sure I like my plan. I mean, maybe I can still play a move with e6 there, but I, I don't see why I should be doing this. I might even play a super positional move like h4, trying to go h5 just to really show him who's boss here. h4, he goes h5, then I take it. You know what? I, I kind of like this h4 move. It's a very slow move. And the only reason I'm playing this is because, again, he can't move this knight. He can't move this knight, so they can't move. He can't really move his bishop. He can't really move his rooks, they don't do anything, and he can't really move his queen. So I don't see what he's doing, so why not just improve my position? And the idea of this is to go h5, because then I kill his pieces. Now here, I'm going to continue with my plan. I'm going to play h5. I want to kill his pieces. Why does this help me? Well, first of all, it stops him playing h5. Number two, I gain more control over g6. And... It's a very useful plan. This It's gained me more time. I'm not rushing. If there was more urgency in my position, I'd be playing quicker with like e6 and e6 and f6. But there's not more. I don't need to rush. Okay. Now it looks like it's time to open up the queen side because he's moved all of his pieces away from the queen side. So surely something like taking here is the natural way to play. So I'm going to do that. And this gives me options of my rook coming in at, at the at the right time so I just want to I'd, I'd love to get my knight in the game it, it's a pity that I can't get this guy in the game at the moment so he's not doing anything he can't move any of his pieces so why don't I just open him up more he can't move this knight he can't move this knight his bishop can't do anything this pawn on f5 is defended by my queen and my rook he can't really move his queen and he can't move his rook so I don't need to rush so I'm just improving things as much as I can his king is over here. My king is totally safe. So what am I doing? I'm opening up as many lines as I can nearer his king. So I've opened up the A file. By playing B3, I'm trying to give my knight opportunities, for example, to come into C5. If he takes my pawn, my knight suddenly becomes a happy piece at the moment. It's not doing anything. I want all my pieces doing something. And the other thing I'm trying to do is simply... I'm just going to take here, which will open up more lines. So has his last move got any point to it at all? Mm, I can't see it. So I'm going to open up more lines. I'm going to take here. If he takes with it D pawn, well, then I have a big diagonal to attack him on there because he no longer has this pawn. If he takes with the B pawn, well, I have another open file to potentially attack on. So I could now start looking for the killer killing blow because knight takes C4. 
I'm going to have to calculate this quickly because my time's run down. Pawn takes, knight takes c4, pawn takes, queen e4, check. Now, if he goes here or here, I have rook a7 winning his queen. So queen here, and if king comes to these two squares, I have rook b1 winning that way. So knight takes c4 seems to be winning. I'm noticing that if I can get rid of the remaining pawn cover around his king, it will be checkmate. This knight's not doing anything anything anyway, so have it, have it. It's a free gift. I'm going to mate you and give you a present on the way. That's how cruel and sadistic I am. So knight takes here, pawn takes, queen e4 check, and his king doesn't have a good square to retreat to. And I pick up another pawn, and my knight now becomes a driving force in the position. He still can't move any of his pieces. I'm getting rid of another defender and this check here. I mean, I could have even considered d5 check, but my queen now comes to a much better square. Look how bare his king is. I even kind of feel a little bit sorry for it, but not too much. If you put, if you put your king on a square like that, son, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it, mate. So um, I'm at least winning the queen here, which I'm quite happy with, but I've got three connected bad boys. B -b 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 bad boys and they're coming rolling 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 up the board so i was getting a little bit excited with a bit of uh yeah well what happened to that band you know they did a couple of good songs limp was it limp is oh dear i don't know i don't know rolling rolling so i mean i think this game's gone quite well hasn't it i mean i have to say all the ideas are shown in this game this is where experience really comes into play Everything I've done in this game is ideas I've seen it previously, and I'm you know, and it's ideas that I'm very aware of, um, and it, they've just all seemed to work. I haven't really even calculated that much. It's it's knowing the right ideas that will give you the right wins. Okay, so rook a7 is good. What about e6 check? I have to calculate this when you see a good move. Look to see if there's a better move. So e6 check, king d8. Now. There I have, oh, this is getting quite pleasant. Queen here check, not for my opponent. If bishop here, rook here. If queen here, I win his queen for a pawn. So knight here, and then his king is in a real bubble. And I can go queen a5 check, and then his only moves knight b6. I take that one check, and I win the game. So this is even stronger, e6 check, unleashing this beast e6 check well his king can't go anywhere else can it no it has to go here then queen d5 game over let's go for that one i mean look at this this is this is a joy to play and the point is king here queen here check i've already calculated it you should double check your calculations calculation is the key the key behind chess um you know you need to know the ideas back up your ideas with calculation this is this is what chess is about this check here and his checkmate in two more moves put that in your pipe and have a smoke son um and knight here takes queen here takes checkmate checkmate sir my opponent maybe moved a little bit too quickly there but um you know it, it, this is the way it goes Let's hope, and he has resigned in good time. Thank you for the game there, Harsh Luperella. Um, an interesting little game. And again, you know, one thing I, I want to, you know, if you're if you're starting out in chess, if you're getting more developed in chess, I my biggest bit of advice I give to people is play the same openings all the time. Okay, I mean this opening, it was. Uh, normal developing moves. Now where it got slightly interesting I think is where I played e4. Now I've played the French defense which if, if you flip the board if you imagine from the black side this pawn structure I've highlighted on the black side most of my life so I know the ideas that black should be doing and I know the ideas that my opponent white should be doing. Hence why all my moves here are pretty natural and this f6 move was far too premature. My opponent should obviously castle first and then maybe go for f6. But I can fight that with a move like rook e1. So when he plays f6, I can take and take on e6 kind of thing. So it's a normal French defense structure. f6 is too premature. My opponent now plays some funny moves. But here, he has to go f5 before I can play f5. If I can get my pawn here, 
I will open all these guys. I'll rip them off the board. I'll literally tear them off the board. And his king will be on a free firing rage. And I'll get my AK out. And I'll cock it. And I'll go, thank you very much, son. But uh, that's why I went F5. Now, my next idea here is, and I've seen this many times in this kind of structure, that if you can win these two pawns for a piece in this particular pawn structure, it's normally worth it because the E pawn is so strong and the F pawn. And again, I've had this happen to me, so I've learned from mistakes. But first of all, it's quite crafty I play A4. Why was this crafty? Because as we saw, when I open up the A file later, it helps me drastically. He really has to try to keep things closed and now I unleash the sacrifice. And well, around here, um, my opponent can definitely defend better, um, but I'm pretty sure I, I, I have enough compensation. The computer might not say I'm better, but I must have enough compensation. If he ever plays G5, I can even take it and my rook comes into F7, a very strong piece. And if he doesn't do anything, I'm simply going to push F5 and I'm constricting him. He can't move much. So this is a good sack. And the way the game went, well, as soon as I get this move in, I'm very confident here. Even though I'm a piece down, another reason this sack works is my opponent's pieces are so poorly placed, he can't uh, free them uh, and he can't free himself in this position so thank you uh, for watching this video um, I'm gonna try to do some more videos this week uh, I'm gonna also be trying to stream let me just show um, every day this week if I'm permitted to I don't know if I better stick to this but I'm aiming to stream at 8 p.m. British summer time every day this week so I'm hoping I can stick to that uh, I'll do my best to but you might better catch me in the evenings this week on my channel uh, my Twitch channel, which of course you can see there. So thank you all very much for watching this video and uh, cheers. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get some more YouTube videos done uh, over the, over this week. Goodbye for now and I'll, I'll catch you all soonish tonight, hopefully. Bye.